Brethren, we live in a broken world. Right? Almost everything that we see is broken. Our government system is broken. Our educational system is broken. Our justice system is broken. Even this earth is broken. We have erratic and unpredictable weather. We have natural calamities. We have earthquakes, typhoons, landslides, and so much more. And not only that, brethren, all of us experience brokenness on a personal level. Our bodies are broken. They don't function naturally or um, they don't actually function very well. Sometimes we feel pain in our bodies. We don't feel, uh, we don't feel young as we used to be. And even though in also our relationships, we have broken relationships. Um, we have every now and then perhaps arguments with our spouse, with our parents, with our children, and our family members. And because of these brethren, we are not just broken physically, but also spiritually. Everywhere, everywhere you look, there are brokenness because we live in a broken world. And because we live in this world, brethren, in a broken and fallen world, it is inevitable for us to experience pain. It is, in, it is inevitable for us to experience pain. In fact, the harsh fact of life is that pain is part of life. No one accepted. Whether you are young or you are young or old, you are poor or rich, you are young or female, you're male or female, all of us feel pain. And if you don't feel pain right now, if you don't have problems, if you don't have any struggles in life, I can assure you with 100% assurance that you will have pain during this life. And because of that, brethren, because pain is naturally part of our life, what should we do? All right? That's what I want us to focus today. Today, I want to talk about do not waste your pain. Do not waste your pain. Because um, since we're going through pain, all right, in our life, we cannot escape it. We cannot avoid it because we are human beings. We are bound to feel pain and struggles in life. So the question is, how can we how can we benefit from our pain? So in this afternoon, brethren, I would like to share with you three ways not to waste your pain. Three ways not to waste your pain. Now, if you're going to apply, if you're going to understand these three ways, I can tell you, brethren, that the way you see pain in life will dramatically change. You will have a paradigm shift in how you view pain in your life when you understand these three points. Now, there are different ways, all right? I just instilled it into three so that we could have this in this short message. So, how can you not waste your pain? All right? Let's go to the first one. Use pain to learn from your experiences. All right? So, actually, pain is a learning process. It is something that teaches you something because pain has its purpose in your life. Now, I want you to remember this, brethren. The greatest lessons we learn come from the, our greatest pain. Okay? Would, you, would you agree with that, brethren, that sometimes the most important, the greatest lessons in our life, you don't, you don't actually learn them from your victories. You don't learn them from your triumphs. You don't learn them in happy moments. Actually, you learn them in your greatest pain in life. I know you could just um, you could look back in your life and you would, you would understand what I'm saying. In my personal life, there are a lot of pain that I've experienced and those pain are something that have taught me the greatest lessons in life. And that's why, brethren, we don't want to waste our pain. And you want to learn something in your experience. There is something about pain, brethren, that it could become one of our best teachers. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11, brethren. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 10 11. It says here, this is talking about the experiences of the Israelites. 
Now all these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for our admonition or instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Now the reason the Bible included the, the lessons or the stories that we read in the Word of God, it is for us to help understand the consequences of our actions. Now, pain has a peculiar way of teaching us valuable lessons. I remember when, ya when Caleb was still small, and I told him, Oh, Caleb, do not put your finger inside the electric fan. And you might have experienced that as parents. You have told your children not to do that. It's going to hurt you. It, it's, it's, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. But lo and behold, they would say, Yes, Daddy. Oh, Caleb, they haven't uh, spoken that time yet. But they would still try it. They would still poke their fingers inside the, inside the electric fan. And boom! They, 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 they would feel shocked and they would say, oh, Daddy was right. See? And since that day when Caleb poked his fingers in the, inside the electric fan, he didn't do it anymore. That's why, brethren, pain is actually a great teacher. It can teach you a lot of things. Now, because of that, brethren, pain forces us to stop and think about what we are doing. When we are doing something wrong, God would let pain to enter in our lives so that we would be woken up. It's like a wake-up call. Hey, Joshua, you're going, to, you're going to the wrong direction. And without pain, we might be, we would realize it too late in our life. Now, the problem is that when we waste our pain, when we go through painful experiences and we don't learn our lesson, then we are bound to commit the same mistake. And sadly, go through the same pain. Diba? You might have said, hindi ka na nadala. Paulit-ulit na lang. Yan na lang laging ginagawa mo. Because we are wasting our pain. But if you learn your lesson from your pain, you would be able to become wiser. You see that, brethren? Actually, I would say, I, um, I, I have a lot of things to learn, but I would say that I am wiser today than when I was in, in my teenage years. You know why? Because I have learned lessons from the wrong decisions in my life. And those who, those who are young people here in the church, I could tell you, there are a lot of experiences in your life and you will go through pain and those pain will help you understand what life truly is. So that's why, brethren, if you go through pain, do not waste it. Learn from your experience. Use pain to learn from life. That's number one, brethren. The number two way for you not to waste your pain is this. This is very important. Use pain to grow your faith. Use pain to grow your faith. Now in the Bible, especially, you don't have to turn there. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that it is impossible to please God without faith. It didn't say it is hard. It is somewhat difficult. It says impossible. Talaga impossible. Without faith, you will not be able to please God. That's why faith is very important for us to have. So the question is, how do you exactly increase your faith? How can you improve it? Let's go to 1 Peter 1 verse 6 to 7. Let's see the role of pain in helping us in developing our faith. Let's go there, brethren. 1 Peter 1, verse 6 to 7 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, kung kailangan, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Why? That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Yahshua, our Messiah. You see that, brethren? It is through pain that our faith is tested. And through the process, we are being able to develop and increase our faith. Now, this tells us, brethren, that our spiritual muscles become stronger when we go through trials in life. Now, if you're going to look into the life of the spiritual giants in the Bible, the faithful servants of God, Moses, 
Joseph, Abraham, David, all of them were not born with faith. Have you, have you realized that, brethren? When they are babies, they don't have faith yet. Faith is something that you develop throughout your life. And this is something that we need to understand, brethren. You won't be able to develop much faith if you just simply live your life comfortably. You have to go through difficulties in life so that you would be able to learn more how to trust God. It's easy to trust God when everything is going fine, diba? Uh, the, the business is going strong. You have strong health. You have very good relationship with your with your um, with everyone. It doesn't take much trust in God. And yet, if you are struck by a health problem, a financial problem, or relationship problem, that's the time when your spiritual muscles need to be flexed and developed. Take the life of Joseph as an example, brethren. He was betrayed by his brothers. He was sold to slavery. He was dragged into a, a foreign land. He was accused. He was put to, into prison for something that he didn't do. And he was forgotten by the person he helped. It seems that the life of Joseph was just a sequence of pain after pain after pain. And you know what, brethren? Those years of difficulties in life and trials of Joseph was actually a preparation for what is stored for him. Do you think, brethren, if, if, if Yahweh has already um, picked up Joseph when he was still young and he was made uh, one, of, uh, one of the top leaders in Egypt, do you think he would be effective when he was still young at the time? He was, effective, he was an effective leader in Egypt because of the things he went through in life. Those things have developed, developed Joseph for this role that was prepared for him by God. That's why, brethren, if you stay faithful through trials, brethren, God is actually preparing you for something big in your life. And ultimately, He is preparing us for our role in His coming kingdom here on earth. So, brethren, in the same manner, don't despise the trials you're going through right now. Don't despise it. Whether you are going through financial problem, maraming utang, maraming bayarin, you have health problems, the medical records are not looking good, you, have, you feel a lot of pain in your body, or you have relationship problems, someone walk out of your life, someone, uh, you have problems with your children, you can look, your, look, you can look at your pain, brethren, and see it as a tool for you to increase your faith further. We need to look at pain and say, I'm not going to just go through pain, but rather, I'm going to grow in pain. Did you see that, brethren? I want you to capture that. Let me repeat. I'm not going to just go through pain, but rather, I'm going to grow in pain. All of us might despite pain, brethren, but when you know if there's a purpose in pain, you will be more patient and you will be more courageous in going through pain. Take for example, brethren, if you ask any mother here in this room, brethren, if you ask them, would you like to go through a life and death experience, a life and death experience pain? They would most certainly say no. Sino bang matinong babae magsasabi na, oh, I don't, I want to experience pain. Wala. But the same mother would willingly go through birth delivery. Nyo? Why would a person would willingly want to go through childbirth? It's so painful. Actually, it is a life and death situation for them. And yet, they would go through it willingly. No one forced them, but they want to do it willingly. Why? Because they know that there is joy beyond the pain. Now, in the same manner, brethren, if you know there is joy beyond the pain, would you be willing to go through it? I would say yes, because it is because you know that there's purpose in your pain. That's the difference, brethren. If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, that's the difference. Kasi yung mga tao sa labas, they don't see any purpose in their pain. Kaya nga nawawala sila ng pag-asay. They lose hope. They want to quit. You know why? Because they don't have God in their life. Tayo, 
We are very blessed to have God in our life, brethren, because we can now see pain with a different perspective. Because this pain that I'm going through right now, it has a purpose. I will not waste this pain. It has something, it will, it will um, fulfill the purpose for this pain. So brethren, do not give up when you go through life difficulties. Because it is accomplishing something in you. That is, it is going to help you develop your character and your faith in God. So that's number two. Finally, brethren, let's go to number three. Use your pain to serve others. Now, this is very important, brethren. Use your pain to serve others. Now, you might say, Josh, I'm already in too much pain. How on earth am I going to serve others in my situation? Nahirapan na nga ako, problemahin ko pa iba. But brethren, let me explain. Alright? You can actually use your pain to serve others. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4, brethren. Our final scripture here. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 to 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of mercies and, mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble. Did you see that, brethren? God comforts us in our tribulation. When do you feel God's love? Um, when do you feel God's love the most, brethren? Kailan yung nararamdaman na yung pagmamahal at yung pag, um, God's mercies and love to you, toward you? It is true pain, di ba? When we go through the victories in life, hindi masyado, but when it comes to pain, He comforts us. And you know what, brethren? That we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The Apostle Paul was saying that during your trouble, during your trouble, God has comforted you. Therefore, extend the same comfort to others. Did you see that, brethren? When we go through life's difficulties, we experience more of God's love, care, and grace. And because we have experienced His mercy, brethren, and comfort, we can now extend the same comfort to others. In other words, pain and suffering allow us to also experience the pain and suffering of others. Now, because of that, brethren, we must not waste our pain. So, because we go through the same pain, we develop more empathy and compassion to others. Kasi mas naiintindihan mo sila eh. Di ba? Sino, who is the best person who could comfort someone who just lost a loved one? It is the person who also lost a loved one. Di ba? Who is the person who could comfort someone who is going through financial problems? It is the same person who have also gone through financial problems. Who is the person who is best to comfort someone who is going through marital issues? It is that person who has also gone through marital issues. Why? Because when you share your experience of pain, the, the connection is stronger. Can you just imagine if I'm going to say, Hey, I was just promoted in my job. They would be happy. They would be happy for me. But when I say, oh, I just lost someone I love, then that person would be able to move closer to me. Because in pain, we become more closer or bonded together. And because of that, brethren, because we could feel the pain of other people, we could better minister or help them. That's why um, I, cannot, I would never forget what our late pastor has told me. Or with, with my wife. He told me, Josh, maybe the reason that God gave you Caleb is so that when the kingdom comes, you will be able to minister to those parents who also have special needs child. Grabe. I was just shocked because I never saw it that way. Here I am. I was focused with my problems. I have a lifetime problem in front of me. And yet, Sir Ed, so a different perspective in my pain. Nakita niya. Hindi ko nakita yun. That there was a purpose in my pain. Because probably, God is preparing me for that special role in my life that when it comes to God's kingdom, 
I will be the one who would be able to have compassion and sympathy to those who also have the same problem as me. Kaya brethren, if you're going through health problems, if you're going through problems in your in your finance and your relationship, don't give up brethren. Because it is preparing you for what's to come in God's kingdom. So brethren, um, pain and suffering are bound to happen in our life. Now instead of going through pain, defeated, hopeless, and discouraged, go through pain with faith, courage, and strength. Because it is through the pain that God is preparing us for His coming kingdom. Now, I want you to remember this. Yahweh will not allow you to go through a pain or difficult problem that you cannot handle. The bigger the problem that He gives you, the bigger He believes in you. So, I, have, I hope that you have that different perspective. So, stop, stop telling yourself you are weak, you want to give up, I want to quit. Instead, remind yourself that God is with you throughout the pain and suffering in your life. So, brethren, don't waste your pain. Instead, learn from it, grow in it, and serve in it. Hello, friends. I need your help. If this is not too much to ask, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. This should only take 5 seconds of your time, but this simple gesture would help me reach more people and share the word of God with the rest of the world. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives.